my assignment is I just got to say what God said. Hallelujah, whether it cut me or cut you. Y'all ain't hit me. Y'all ain't hit me right. See, I understand that when you're preaching, y'all may not understand why you're preaching. You got to preach to you and you. Hallelujah. And you got to cut you and you got to cut them too. Glory to God. And I walked out of here last week and somebody said something to me. And I began to kind of ponder over it. And I said, God, what bugs people the most? I said, what bugs people the most? I said, is it money that bugs people? I said, if you preach about money, does that bother people? He said, yeah, it bothers people. I said, if you preach about sin, does that that bother people. He said, yeah, that bothers people. He said, well, well you preach about sex. He said, that, that bothers people. He said, I told you last week, all three of them bother people. But then I got to work and I was talking to some people at work. I said, what bug you the most when the preacher did the preacher? And they said, I can't stand no preacher talking about sex. Now, that was this week. I just, I just want to ask God. I asked God. See, when I leave here, I ask him, did I say what you wanted to say? Did I do what you wanted to do? And sometimes I ask people. And, he, and then when I was at work, one, one person just shot at me and said, I can't stand no preacher that's having struggles in their sexual life. They said, I'm not going to deal with the money a little bit. Everybody seen this particular person said, everybody cussing was at me. So I ain't going to get bothered with the preacher cussing. I said, well, I don't want to cuss the preacher. They said, but if he cuss, I, I might can handle the cussing. And if he kind of messing up with money, I might get him to mess it up with money. But if he messing up with women, I'm stupid. Y'all didn't hear y'all didn't hear me. That's what somebody at my job spoke to me this way. They said, I'm do listening to them. Like, how can you tell me? How, how can you tell me something you struggling with? Oh, yeah. yeah. So then I said, God, I said, but well, what are you supposed to say? He said, you say what I told you to say, and then I do the rest of it. He said, just say what I told you to say, and I handle the rest of it. Come he said, but we're in a world where everybody's struggling in their flesh, and ain't nobody addressing the flesh oh, in church. So people go to church, and they got all kinds of flesh problems. He just made me say, your flesh out of control. I asked y'all to fast, and half of y'all can't fast. Y'all ain't got to say nothing in here. I asked you to give, and half of y'all can't give. I asked you to come to church, and half of y'all can't come to church. I asked you to be friendly to people, and y'all ain't got to say nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you what God will say to me. And sometimes God will say, I tell you the same thing. I tell you to fast, glory to God, and you can't go all day. You just going to stop at about 12, or stop at 3, or stop at 6. He said, hey, what, what about them days right now? Now, he probably was a lot more common with him than me, but I was scared to death of him. When I would get around him, it just shut me because of the anointing of God that was on his life. But his flesh was out of control at the water burden. And he told the story to me one time while he was here. How much it made him feel bad to be with this great man of God and have the opportunity to learn and glean from him. Now he's sitting out there with 10,000 people in Dallas this Sunday morning preaching because that great man of God would always remind us. All of a sudden they said, I didn't know you was no preacher. I wouldn't have been doing all this cussing and talking crazy if I'd have known. And I'm like, you act like I'm God. If God, he here right now, he hear everything you saying, so I was supposed to tell you that I'm a preacher so you will stop cussing. You ain't stop cussing and God standing out here, God. He right here in the midst. He everywhere. And you ain't stopped cussing, so I ain't nobody. <laughs> and, and the conversation kind of led from one place to another. And then they said, well, what kind of church do you have? I said, well, my church kind of rough. I said, I, I preach kind of hard. And that's when I got into the money and the sex and the sin. They said, well, I couldn't handle no message like that. I said, I know. And then the person said, well, I go to a church way down the road, way down out in the country, and then only meet, like on the third Sunday. Each email on your phone. Y'all didn't hear me. I said, if you're going to pull your phone out, you ought to have a Bible that moment, not Facebook. Y'all didn't hear me. I said, if you got a, a, a smartphone, hit a neighbor and say, a smartphone got a Bible that moment. <laughs> I said, if you got a real smartphone, y'all don't know. I said, a real smartphone, y'all didn't hear me. Uh, a, a real smartphone got a Bible that moment. Hallelujah. Uh, what come to pass? Anything that's in my word, what I said, is going to come to pass. So it's up to us to get in position to get on the right side of God's word. Because what he said going to come to pass. He's coming back 
back again. And he's not coming back to let you get saved. He's not coming back to let you get saved. If you ain't saved before he get back this next time, you ain't going to get an opportunity to get saved. You're going to get judged. Okay. Hit a neighbor and say, get saved before he come back. They knew the man was still moving. So he was going in to offer up a sacrifice for his sin, his sin, and your sin. Y'all ain't got to hear me. Do you know how hard it is for me Hallelujah for me if I would have been him and I knew you wasn't right. But the man, do you know how hard it would have been for me to go up in that holy of holies and I knew you wasn't right? And you tie a rope to my leg and a bell in my hand and I got to stay alive for God and I know you ain't right. Not just say it. Try to tell me how to live. They ain't with them. But they don't understand the level of he got to go up in there with that rope. If he really truly called, he got to go up in there with a rope on his leg and a bell in his hand for you and for himself. Oh God. So ain't nobody preaching for the preacher, but when they fall, I remember Eddie Long it hurt me. It hurt me because I had really and every now and then, stress and trouble and certain people will push your buttons and bring it out. And the best of people, the best of people, people that you consider to be the best of people, got something in them that if you push their button, you wouldn't like it if you saw what came out. Stay back. Come on. Stay back. He said, but when they're cut, life has to go on the outside mm. to heal on the outside oh, so that they keep life shut up in the inside. Oh, Y'all huh. yeah. didn't hear it. Y'all didn't hear it. He said, the reason why the, body, why the blood has to come out is because the blood has life in it and it comes out to seal up. You didn't hear me. It comes out to cover, y'all in here, man. To cover over the hole that's allowing life to leak out. Yeah. So the blood, y'all, y'all in here, man. Y'all gonna catch this, Lord God. You need God. You need God. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing back to me. I'm preaching already. Hallelujah. You need God. Some of us are sitting in the room and know there are things in us that's got to come out. Hallelujah. Hear the name say, I don't know when it's gonna come out, but I know it's got to come out. You didn't hear me. I, I, y'all ain't saying nothing back to me. I don't know when it's going to come out, but I know it's got to come out. Here today, you ever had a splinter, glory to God? You didn't sit there and let the splinter stay in your finger. You said to yourself, I got to get this splinter out. Hallelujah. If you had to go to the doctor, you had to get it out. If you had to go to So while all of y'all in the room are dealing with various things, y'all got your Bibles, I'm going to John, 1st John. Over in the back part of the Bible, 1st John. 1st John. I'm hurrying up. I gotta read a, a few verses so y'all won't just think Pastor Randy be talking all kind of around in circles. I'm not. I, 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 I know God is saying something in me. I don't know why he keeps saying it and I don't know why he won't let it let me alone with it. But I know. And he bagging off and his breath be cutting up. Y'all ain't saying that. I don't want to be funny. Because when you preach from your diaphragm, it, 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 it makes whatever is in your stomach come up into your into your esophagus. And so there's an odor. Y'all looking at me from all y'all got it. I ain't scared to tell y'all. Cough real good. Sneeze the right way. Y'all y'all ain't never notice when some people sneeze, man, you have to leave, you have to back off them. Y'all looking at me funny like y'all ain't never smelled that breath. You can't preach that. Just sometimes I have to just come home because y'all try to act all so did it. Y'all got your A suit on, but I I, I, I want to be the church where at least sometimes we can get real. Come on, Pastor. Y'all ain't never noticed when y'all sneeze or some people sneeze or when they got a cold and they sneeze, you got to back up off of them. Huh? Yeah. Because whatever it is, that cold or whatever it is, that body part is, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Yeah. Hallelujah. Did y'all say it's said in him? It's not talking about outside of him, and it's not talking about something that's 
like, like, like an organ that's in him. It's talking about something spiritual is in him. Hallelujah. It says if he does not love God, the love of the Father, the love of the world is in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Hear the neighbor and say flesh love. The lust of the eyes. It wasn't in your heart because if it was in your heart, they would have stayed on your feet. It was just in your eyes. It didn't go 18 inches down to your heart because if you love them so much, you wear them every day. If you love them so much, you sleep with them. Y'all ain't got to pray with me. You looking at me funny, glory to God. Them shoes, if you love them so much, glory to God. Matter of fact, you wouldn't wear them. You sit them up on the window seal and just look at them all day. Worship them. So the lust of the flesh, yeah, it includes sin and sex and all of the different things that I've been talking about. And I don't want to remember, it includes money. I don't want to get off into it today because I know I get, I get y'all uncomfortable and I don't want to make you uncomfortable. I want to bring you through. I want to inspire you to draw nigh unto God. That's my assignment, is to get you closer to God. But the Bible says that in the world, in this environment that we go to every day, that we interact with on a daily basis, inside of the world is the lust of the flesh, the world, but you're not of the world. Isaiah chapter 53, I said, well, how do we get it out, God? How do we begin to work on getting some of the things out? You know, neighbor, and say, you got to want to. You got to want to get it out first. That's the first step. You got to want to get it out. And the second step is you got to know what's in there. Matter of fact, you ain't even got to know what's in there. You got to acknowledge that it's in there. Somebody said, man, that you forget where you at? You get so mad that, hallelujah, you forget the thing? Y'all don't get to say nothing. Y'all looking at the front of the guy. You get so mad, you just say anything. You get so mad, you just do anything. Y'all ain't got to help me preach it. Help little guy. Get a neighbor and say, blank, you know the blank, has a strong hold on you. Some of us are proud. We can't be told nothing. We think, we, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, I speak to your spirit to live. In the name of Jesus, I tell your soul, your baby's waiting on you to wake up, glory to God. You've got to get up from here in the name of Jesus. And so the assignment of the preacher is to pump life, hallelujah, is to resuscitate your spirit, hallelujah, so you can get up out of glory to God. I always going to help me preach, glory to God. My assignment is to help you, boom, boom. On your spirit, glory to God. Not your natural heartbeat, but your spiritual heartbeat to make that keep life in you so you won't bleed out to death. Amen. 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 I said, Amen. Amen. Jesus, that's why they have blood transfusions. They'll take somebody else's blood, hallelujah, and put it on you, hallelujah, to make your life come back again. And Jesus Amen. did a blood transfusion Amen. on the cross Amen. so that he can lock up your scar, lock up your lust, lock up your lying, lock up your cussing, lock up your adultery, lock up your fornication, lock up every area of your life that does not please God so he can keep life on the inside of you so that he died so you would Come on. You know how people fall out with you? They take your stuff and try to use it on you. Come on, come on, try to kill you. Preach, man. Come on. Yeah. And take your stuff and try to down you and beat you. Can't tell everybody your problem. That's why I said it's important to be able to get to Jesus because you can't tell everybody your problem. I, I remember Bishop Eddie Long. I remember sitting down on that stage and I remember that other preacher just beating him up. Beat. Come on, talk about it. it. I, how you know, man, because David had a sex problem. It was not just no murdering problem. It was a sex problem. How you know, preach, man? man preach. Because he killed a man and took the man's wife. And before you can know it, she was already pregnant. It was a sex problem. Let's go. Come on. Moses had a temple problem. He was trying to help the Hebrews, and before he knew it, he was killing somebody. 
Preach it, you got your back. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Yeah. Y'all, there's some stuff in my life, Lord God. And as I told some people, I got to crawl about the room with my hand up. Like, you know, in the church, when everybody raised up their hand, and uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Some stuff in your life. Hallelujah. Stuff, stuff. Y'all, stuff. If your stuff hit the fan, hallelujah, you put your hand up. It's in So everybody does not need to know. But God knows. And you need to tell him. Point it out. Just pull it out. Don't wait for Jesus to get here and point it out. Push it out. Uh, Just like you push out a baby. Push it out. Pull it out. Snatch it out. Run it out. Cast it out. Show come full of more color. I'm down here where I need to be now. Every eye closed, every head down, every hand lifted, glory to God. I, I did not get mad on a moment's notice. Help me, God. In every area today, I'm asking you for strength on the inside of me. And I give you praise today. I give you praise today. That strength is coming from the outside to the inside. From heaven to my heart. Give somebody a little praise from heaven to heart. Hallelujah. From heaven to my heart. Hallelujah. Strength from heaven to my heart. Come on, open up your mouth and say, God. From heaven to my heart, from any way to bless me, God, it's fine with me. My soul say yes. Hallelujah. Soul say yes. Soul. 